Hello, welcome. Welcome to Women, Money, and Power. I see that there are so far women from over five continents here. So welcome to this global uh, extravaganza where we are going to talk about women, money, and power. I am really, really excited that you're all here. Um, first, some of you have signed up for the Power With Money course that begins this Thursday and want to find out what you've gotten yourselves into. Well, this will give you a really good sense. Some of you are on the fence about signing up and uh, this will give you a sense of what you would be getting yourself into should you choose to sign up. And lastly, very, very, very importantly, to those women who are here and have absolutely no intention of signing up for Power With Money, you are welcome, welcome, welcome. And it is my hope that you find everything useful that you can in this next period of time and go out into the world and use it for greater power, for greater joy, to have the life that you want. So now a very important part of this particular event is the chat box. Because I'm very interested in hearing from you. I love to go on long rants, but I also love to hear what your sense is, what your feel is, what your life experience is, because all the curriculum of the academy is based on real experiences that real women had and real problems they solved, not some theoretical, analytical, academic bullshit that's supposed to work or a hack that should work only if you did it enough, tried hard enough, and if it's not working, there must be something wrong with you. <laughs> so first things first, let's just practice using the chat box. Um, there is at the bottom of your screen an icon with a bubble that says chat. If you press on that, a column opens up on the right side of the, the screen with the chat. So as a practice question, and as, as my curiosity uh, can't resist, what do you hope to get out of this particular session together? And feel free to answer away, free associate. There's no, no such thing as a wrong answer. So what do you hope to get out of money is the first answer. Some enlightening. I want to find the blind spots, losing my shame around money, getting paid my worth. Awesome. More clarity. Awesome. My voice back. So good. Oh, so many answers. Wisdom, beauty, a sense of the process, creative solutions. This is amazing. Exercises, get rid, of, get rid of poverty mindset, getting paid for what I deserve. I'm a badass bitch, now where is my money? <laughs> Understanding the relationship between money, self-worth, and shame. Excellent, excellent. Concentration, I have so many distractions. Confidence to make and handle money. Self-confidence, stop being afraid of money. I don't know what I don't know. Okay, great, great. So um, the first thing I wanna to speak to you about, because it might actually happen inside of this very session. It's something at the Academy that we name the fog. So inside of this very session, you might experience the fog. You might not experience the fog, but it's very important to bring up front. So the, the it was an incredible experience. The very, very, very first time I taught power with money. Live class back in the days where we could see each other face to face, feel each other, uh, you know, fill a room with vibes, not wear masks. And it was a beta test of the class. Um, I wanted to see if I could do this. I wanted to see what I was up against. I wanted to understand what the landscape for women of money really was. And it was the first 15 minutes, it was like, poof, the room had opened up. And all of the sudden, all of the sudden, it was like a fog had crept into the room. 
It was like somebody put some kind of like toxic gas into the air conditioning and all of a sudden, all of us were starting to feel wobbly. Women were losing trains of thought in the middle of a question. We started, actually I see a couple faces who were in that very room. You remember that moment, it was so strange. It almost felt supernatural. And then we had this brilliant, brilliant student raise her hand and go, I know this feeling. She says, I'm an engineer. I deal with money, numbers, facts, figures all day long. But when I sit down to handle my personal finances, fog, it's all gone. I don't understand numbers anymore. This is a woman who deals with numbers. All of a sudden cannot look at a spreadsheet, cannot look at her bills without going, what the fuck is that? What is that? We're going to talk about that today. Um, so, <laughs> you know, some of us fog when we look at numbers. Some of us fog when it's time for, for us to ask for what we want. Some of us fog many, many different situations. So I, I, I want to get a sense of if anyone, especially the brand new people here, have ever experienced something where you're dealing with money you're an intelligent, strong, powerful woman. You're dealing with money as it relates to you, not on someone else's behalf, but as it relates to you. And all of the sudden, you dropped 100 IQ points. So in the chat box, if you've experienced the fog at any time in your life, if you know what this foggy feeling is, can you share when it happened. When I'm being trained at work, when I'm negotiating pay, a long ago when I was 13, student loans, when trying to make sense of retirement plans with a broker. And do you feel the, do you feel like the, the almost physical sensation of this foggy, foggy feeling? It happens because of fear around big life decisions, when asked a question, when under pressure, when making decisions, when doing business, when I get gripped around a big ticket item. I'm fogging at this question. Okay, great, okay. So the, uh, the causes of the fog is something that I can only guess at. And why? is uh, absolute causality is hard to nail, but I know that when certain things are dealt with, the fog clears. So when certain things are looked at, the fog clears. So it's a hot cocktail of things. It's a really rich, ripe, hot cocktail of bullshit <laughs> that makes it so easy for women in particular to fog. People in general can fog, but women in particular. So first things first. I'm gonna ask you two questions and it's going to sound like I'm implying something. Allow yourself to consider that I may not be asking you these questions for the reasons I'm asking you these questions. So first things first, um, the richest person in the world is not in this class. The poorest person in the world is not in this class. All of us in this class are richer and poorer than someone else. All of us. Some of the women who take this class have a lot of money. Some of the women who take this class have very little money because having more money doesn't lead to power with money, but power with money can lead to more money, does lead to more money. So this is the first question. No matter how rich or poor you are, I want you to fill in the blank. Rich people are, fill in the blank. Rich people are, meaning people way richer than you. Rich people are. Rich people are what? Lucky, the worst, Republican, successful, powerful, incredible, too quiet, worry-free, 
white, asshole, self-obsessed, creative, free, loaded, classy, more free, disconnected from reality, rich people lack humanity, classy, independent, selfish, generous, colonizers, have more options, blessed, hardworking, privileged, soulless, do the stuff that I wish I could afford to do, born rich, political, protected. Okay, so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of mixed messages here, but that's not really what I'm getting at, which is why I'm going to ask you a second question. People who are really fucking good with money are, fill in the blank, people who are really good with money, smart, financially savvy, intelligent, confident, focused, cold, magicians, shrewd, future focused, not afraid to ask, disciplined and ruthless, clear-eyed, dispassionate, calculating, goal-oriented, intentional, detailed, in possession of some kind of magic, disciplined, grounded, strategic, calculating, in control, don't attach emotion to it, selfish, calm, aligned. Okay, so we have the same kinds of mixed messages about richer people or rich people or very, very rich people, same kind of mix um, that we do with people who are good with money. But is there anything that actually stands out to anyone here? The common thread in both in both, the common thread in both, non-reactivity. Okay, the common thread in both, and this was, this was a really, really important discovery in the course of using the school as a laboratory to understand. It's feeling versus not feeling. People who are good with money can dissociate from their feelings and just be about the numbers. Think about that for a moment. Feeling versus not feeling. I can have feelings about all the people in the world who are poorer than me. I can have feelings about people who are richer than me, but I better not have feelings when it comes to my money. So, okay. Uh, we live in a really bizarre culture, especially in America where empaths envy sociopaths. It is noble to be stoic and not have feelings. That is how you get powerful. You have no feelings. Just look, look, at, look at any, any bookseller, look at their book lists and like check out sociopath, check out empath. All the books on sociopaths, most, the most, prevalent thing is how to learn the secrets of a sociopath without becoming one what you can learn from a psychopath Whee! and the books on empaths is how to handle your horrible curse how not to be affected like we don't know how to use empathy as a superpower we think sociopathy is a gift i mean really like if only i could stop having feelings i could get my shit together and create the life of my dream what does that result in a sociopathic economic system that we're all a part of and playing in. What kind of choice is that? Is that really the choice we have to make? Zero feeling. Let's not have feelings about anything ever and get everything done, become really powerful, successful, amazing, superhuman. Super, being superhuman and having feeling, empathy, the bodily wisdom, the embodied truth, that's what sets the world right. What sets the world right is women with power and money who have not made the choice to disconnect from feeling. So part of the fog, what part of the fog is this thing where it's just like, I'm not supposed to have feelings. I'm having feelings. I'm not supposed to have feelings. Do I disconnect from feelings? Oh God, there go my feelings again. They're getting in the way. That's just one little part of the hot cocktail that creates the fog. Because once we start opening up and being like, oh, these are my feelings. These are my feelings and we can move them through the body, we can release the stuck emotions to create energy, all of a sudden, feelings are not a problem. They're a fuel, they're a gift. So I don't want a world where everybody 
who gets to the top of the economic ladder gets so by essentially being a really high functioning sociopath. You can see why that's problematic. And, and I also don't want the women who are so big hearted, deeply connected to their feeling, deeply connected to their bodies, fuck themselves by letting those feelings stop them from going for these units of life force that no matter how you look at it, units of life force that are what we want and need in order to thrive and succeed. That's how it's set up. You can be like, I want to opt out. Good luck, because opting out looks like trying to buy a piece of private property where you can be free of money and you have to count on the private property laws that this economic system sets up. So, so it's, it, there's no such thing as opting out. However, there is such a thing as playing half in and half in gets nobody nowhere. So, all right. The next thing in the hot cocktail that creates the fog is really similar to what we've already seen. Really, really similar to what we've already seen. And this is just pure and simple. This is just pure and simple. Mixed messages about money. Money is, give it to me. Money is a sign of success. Money is the root of all evil. Money is what? What is money? Source of evil, social construct, safety, power, sin. Freedom, an open metaphor, an expression of energy. Makes it all happen. Confusing, power, freedom, fun, means to an end. Useful, corruptive, necessary, fantastic, makes the world go around. The answer to all things, social lubricant, a tool, misery, enabler, taboo. All right, so the mixed messages are essentially some of the biggest mind fuckery of the bad spell that we're under that affects anyone who's committed to not being a sociopath way, way, way harder, way, way harder. And you can tell me, oh, money is actually neutral and intellectually, theoretically, Money's just an agreement. Money doesn't exist. Money's just an agreement. It is absolutely neutral. But it's not neutral when your pay gets cut in half or when your sick kid needs surgery. So if it doesn't show up as neutral in our lives at all. So, okay, we have the fog. We have the feeling versus not feeling. And we have these mixed messages about money. Now just imagine for a second, like, what the deal is. Here we are set up in a system where if you want to eat, if you want to survive, if you want to thrive, if you want to create something stupendously beautiful in the world that involves other people and reaches others, money is involved. And money love, loving money, loving this life force unit, loving what it makes possible, loving this incredible container for what's possible is taboo for really good reasons. Money's not good or bad. It's how we relate to it. Power with money is about relating to money in new ways without cutting off any parts of ourselves. So just like think of a situation where you had, you were carrying mixed messages and you wanted to communicate to somebody, ask for something, say something, but you had that mixed message feeling in your body. You're like, ah, 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 ah. how do those conversations go? Even something simple, like you want to ask your neighbor to turn down the volume, but you feel guilty and you also don't want to be a bitch, but like you haven't slept in two hours and is it really necessary for them to play the music so loud? And you go over there and, and you're like, uh, excuse me, hi, uh, I'm next door and I can't sleep. La, 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 la. Could you please turn your music down? <laughs> mixed message communication. Mixed message communication sends mixed messages to others. And how are we supposed to communicate powerfully, shamelessly, boldly? about money if we have this underneath mixed message uh, 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 hogwash 
it's, it, it has the power to taint every word, so much so that we prefer not to speak. So the bad money spell, right? Feeling versus not feeling in the, in the fog cocktail and the bad money spell. It's unspiritual to go for money. I'm not doing it for money. I'm doing it because I love doing it. But when I don't get paid for it, I feel like shit. Like, come on. It's time to get real because getting real is the only way that we're going to get anywhere. And I mean anywhere in your own personal wealth life or anywhere in terms of actually having conversations about the economic system that makes sense. That makes sense. Not what we're doing right now, just throwing ideas and theories at each other. So, all right. Let's add another thing to the mix. In the Rich Ripe Fog cocktail comes in being a woman. <laughs> good girl money, good girl conditioning. All right, we're already not supposed to want the thing we want. We're already not supposed to want money, but if we do have it and we do achieve it, it's a mark of success. It's the root of all evil, but also born of hard work, intelligence, and financial savvy. So that's already a clusterfuck. Now, add being a woman. Um, for millennia, 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 in terms of ambition, in terms of creation, and in terms of her financial future, a woman could only count on one thing, which was to marry well. Now, I want you to just take a look at like the timeline of human history. If in 1974 in Connecticut, a woman couldn't get a credit card without her husband's signature, this idea that a woman can have power with money is very new. Some of us on this call were alive in 1974. That's how new it is. So everything up until very, very recently has the unspoken atmospheric conditioning is be a good girl. Female goodness looks like what? Female goodness looks like being accommodating harmonizing situations, performing enormous amounts of invisible labor without complaining about it, without expecting to be compensated for it. That makes a really good candidate for a, for a wife in 1888. Modest, doesn't have any sexual desire, but is willing to, uh, to be sexual with her sanctioned partner. Right? She doesn't have needs. She doesn't have wants. She's cheerful. She doesn't have feelings. She's just Nice. And on top of that, a, a really good candidate for a wife in 1888 would be that she is also incredibly low maintenance. She's not going to cost her husband very much at all. She doesn't need much. She doesn't ask for much, just for the kids, just for the house, but not for herself. There isn't a single woman I have ever met in my entire life that's actually low maintenance. I don't know if there's such a thing as a low maintenance human, but a low maintenance woman, <sighs> definitely not, definitely not. Um, so, you know, sometimes when I start talking about good girl conditioning, I get a woman who's just like, fuck that, I ain't no good girl. I'm an independent woman. I work, I make my own money, I, I do, uh, ever, I go for everything that I want. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. And that's incredible. That's huge progress. But how much of it are you doing alone? How much are you picking up slack from others? How much of that energy is going to others? How much support do you get? Are you also tired, exhausted, overworked, and pissed off? I have my shit together. But do you have your shit together because you have your shit together all by yourself? Because if you look at the self-made man, if you actually look at the self-made man, he did not make himself. He did not make himself. There were tons of invisible support structures that led to his success. And if nothing else, he had a fucking wife. So like, don't give me that. <laughs> like independent woman has power with money if she's giving away half of her life blood for free and not even noticing it. Good girl conditioning is pernicious as fuck. And when you add being a woman to the mix, we just went from being property to being able to own property. And this goes double for any black woman. Being property to owning property. It just happened. How are we not to have the conditioning that's left over from those times when those times were like five minutes ago and we still have grandmothers telling us to wear pearls? Think about it. 
that good girl conditioning. No, thanks. I don't want to ask for too much. I'm not asking to, I'm not going to ask to, for too big a raise. You know, um, there was this incredible um, example where there was a tech website and the incredibly benevolent, well-meaning, well-intentioned, well-hearted uh, people who set up that tech jobs website noticed that women were asking for way too little and men were asking for way too much. So they did this wonderful graph for every job. This is the average that people ask for. This is on the high range. This is on the lower range. You know what happened? Women started asking for even less. Men started asking for even more. This isn't a question of information. This isn't a question of getting the details and the numbers. This is a full body affair, breaking the conditioning, clearing the fog, cutting through it, and looking at the reality that we live in, and opting in to play fully, body, heart, mind, and soul. Not half in because money's dirty, because like, you know, news just broke in, in, in America that our president paid $750 in taxes when he took office. That's not a punch in the stomach. Like, I'm not saying that it's fair. I'm saying you have to play the game. You have to get in there. And please don't cut off your feelings. Don't cut off any part of yourself when you play fully. Opt in because opting out is not an option. And we need women who are powerful, passionate, totally connected to their bodily wisdom, making decisions, leading the way and having power with money. It's absolutely essential. I don't see how this world really improves without that key component. I'm powerful, but when it comes to money, I turn the other way, I fog out, I don't wanna have anything to do with it. Well, what, stand, what, what, what chance does the, the economic system have? What, you know, you just, look, just take a look and see what, you know, men have their own conditioning, they are not the enemy. Men are beautiful human beings. They have their own set of problems. They have their own set of training. But when you look at what's happening in the world, you see female leaders handling their nations very differently than the male leaders. And what the women are doing is what we need more of. And it's not gonna happen if the best women, the best women, especially in times of crisis, revert to the best of female good behavior to be unoffensive, to not ruffle any feathers, to hold back, to not ask for too much, to not be outrageous, all of that stuff. That's like really, really good, really, really good, and really, really inappropriate for the world that we live in really, really inappropriate for the world that we live in. We not only need to have power with money and wield money powerfully, we need to lead the way in our totally, totally badass, bold, fully connected, embodied relationship to money. And, you know, one thing I'd say is it's important to remember that this fog cocktail, all of the components of it, everything that comes in when you feel the fog, it's not you. It's not you, it's all of us. All of us are under the impact of good girl conditioning, of the mixed messages, of, you know, like I have, I have it affects your dating life, who you, who you, who you uh, hook up with, it affects your sex life. I had a class uh, where a therapist, a couples counselor was like, me and my professionally, my other couples counselors and therapists talk about this a lot, how so many divorces actually happen because the couple never really got to a place where they could talk freely with each other about money. Ruins relationships, if it's not handled powerfully. Families, what you choose to do as your life purpose, how you spend all your time, how many, how many, you know, good girl money, how many times do we do things in order to get money? What do we sacrifice? What is the cost? Is that wealth if we're sacrificing? Are we factoring those sacrifices into the money that we make or get? Okay, so. I want to emphasize once again that power with money can radically expand your wealth. It also can radically expand and improve your relationships with every single person in your life. However, having more money, just having more money, having great wealth does not mean you have power with money. And one of the biggest shockers for me was <laughs> when I was invited to uh, talk with a very exclusive club, a club you could only get into if you made nine figures or more. 
And, you know, cute little Kasha, the spy rebel goes, oh, I wonder if I can teach them something. This is going to be really interesting. I wonder what mayhem and mischief I can provoke here. And I, I just, I was just dumbfounded. I was dumbfounded. There was no secrets of the rich there. It was powerlessness, powerlessness, powerlessness. Uh, uh, one man uh, in 2008 pretended that he lost all his money to his kids and his wife, has been living a lie ever since for the last 12 years. They all think they're poor. They all think they're barely making it. He's still rich as fuck, and that's his secret that he will probably carry to his grave only to shock his family upon his death. Tell me that's what power with money looks like, and I will laugh in your face. That means like his relationships are inhibited on every single level, how he values himself, how he's able to communicate. And this is, this is like the, the stereotype of the wealthy man, stereotype all the sociopathy and still the feeling that he cannot talk to his kids. He can, powerless. That is one of many of examples where I saw people with wealth and money having no power with money. They question their personal relationships. They don't know who loves them for real. And like these things are real. They don't have a choice but to make decisions that may be bad for the world, but legally are bound to their stakeholders. I mean, you name it. So, okay. Power with money in, includes everyone. It includes the mom who's working two jobs, is single and feels completely fucked and underpaid and doesn't know what to do. And women with money that feel totally powerless around it. So I had to preface that because I wanna, I, I wanna, um, Say something kind of provocative, which is you can't make money by yourself. When, uh, when, when, when we get into a space of like, ah, this game is fucked, but I need to go for mine. There's this like, kind of like sister thought and feeling of fuck it, I'll do it myself. I'll do it myself. I'll do it myself. I'll do it all myself. You can't make money by yourself. You literally can't make money by yourself. The only way you can make money by yourself is if you were on a desert island with a, a, like a little typewriter or a paintbrush and you were drawing money on leaves and then you could like pay yourself when you did something nice and like take money away from yourself when you didn't and that would just be a game in absurdist insanity. You can't make money by yourself because money is relational. It's entirely re relational. We like to pretend it's not. We like to say our money, their money. Relational. And this is why the communication aspect of money is so important. Why clearing the fog, why, why, why dismantling all the shit in the cocktail, the, the feelings, no feelings, the good girl messaging, right? Like all that stuff, like ignore those feelings and become essentially a sociopathic wealthy man or do it differently, but how? because it's taking me down. When I go there, it takes me down. I go into a fog. Money is relational. So communication becomes the most important thing. And now I'm sure many of you can attest to the fact that it's sometimes easier to talk about your last sexual es escapade or your sexual dissatisfaction with a friend than it is to frankly and openly discuss money, including numbers, talk about salaries, talk about money. It, it, it's, it's like, it's such a taboo that it's not even called a taboo. It's invisible. Like, we just don't do it. Like, sometimes we do it a little, but like, I can tell you with my girlfriends and I can tell you with the people in my life, I know everything about their families, their health conditions, really private shit. Things that happened to them when they were 12 that they're traumatized by. But if I want to know about their money, <sighs> delicate, 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 because it doesn't just come out on its own. It doesn't just come out on its own. So now, whether, whether it's, you know, 
you know, you can name any predicament, whether it's a starving artist who's been uh, making bunches of money here and there and spending extravagantly and loving her relationship with money, but all of a sudden has a passion project she wants to do that's going to require investors. She's going to need to have conversations about money, powerful conversations about money without the mixed signal jargon fogginess, but like really badass, shame, shameless, like bold, full body feeling, real conversations about money. Um, I'm, I'm just naming students we've had in the past. Uh, an heiress who doesn't know how much money she stands to inherit, therefore can't plan her life as to talk to her parents about their death. Difficult conversation to have, difficult conversation to have about money. That conversation opens a lot of doors. Uh, a mom with two kids, two jobs, uh, a partner that's not really picking up the slack, conversations. Uh, the corporate killer who loves her job but is afraid of losing her job or like getting demoted if she has a baby. Powerful conversations about money. Fundraising a new project, a life coach that wants to charge her rate, uh, a divorced woman who can't get her ex to be consistent with child support payments, whatever it is, whatever it is, it comes down to a conversation about money. So now I want to turn it back over to you and ask you, what things are you not saying about money? What conversations are you not having? <clears throat> what feelings are you not expressing? What things aren't you saying? Where's uh, 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 uh. censorship? Student loans should be canceled. Earning takes too much energy. Excellent. I'm done well over the pandemic. Excellent. Shame about credit card debt. Excellent. Shame about student loan debt. Excellent. I'm afraid to spend what I earn. Charging my value. Beautiful. I'm scared I can't generate enough. Pay me back. Wishing my partner would figure his money shit out. Yes, yes. I'm scared to death about when my husband retires or dies or our life crashes because I don't make enough. Yes, yes, yes. These are all conversations. Really pissed about getting embezzled. This is so fast. I'm worth more. Can't, can generate, can't generate enough. Shame about not using my degree. Want to do some good in the world with my foundation. I don't know how. I'm scared about not making enough for retirement and buying property. In all my time teaching this class, I have yet to find a money block, a money obstacle, a money psychological story background. That I, I can't, I, money slips through my fingers because, or I don't feel powerless money because, that didn't point to a conversation that's not being had. And Sometimes you can leap into that conversation and sometimes it really serves to clear the fog, the mixed messages, get grounded, rooted, clear, alchemize all that emotion, alchemize all that energy. You know, asking for something when you're ashamed of having gotten to yourself in a situation is not a compelling ask. It's just going to feel terrible for the person listening and the person saying it. I'm talking about the kind of conversation that creates a visionary feeling no matter what it's about. Fear of investing and then losing money. No fun to pay down debt, feeling lack. I'm afraid to be targeted for my money. Uh, I secretly love luxury. These are all things that point to conversations. So, The first thing, the first thing, the first, first really, 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 really awesome, awesome tool to start playing with is a very, very, very simple one. Very, very simple one. See if you can become aware of moments where you fog or avoid. Throughout the day. And there's an important part to doing this, incredibly crucial, critical, and essential, that every single time you notice 
a fogging out or an avoidance, you celebrate. You celebrate and you do nothing about it. Don't try to muscle over the fog. Don't try to make yourself do something you're avoiding. You cannot begin to make change without seeing what the landscape looks like first and rewarding yourself, loving yourself and rewarding yourself for every little bit of awareness you gain will create a domino effect of awareness, seeing clearly. You can't break the rules you can't see. And so many of the rules that, especially as women, we end up following, we end up following like auto response. We don't even know we're doing it. Saying yes to something that we don't really want to do. Making something really, really easy for someone else, even if it means bending over backwards ourselves. Like a lot of these things are just, they're instantaneous. And it's not a question of stop doing or continue doing. It's a question of first awareness. Where am I fogging out? What conversations am I avoiding? What information am I avoiding receiving? Simple information about money. Dumb money questions. What dumb money questions am I not asking? With absolutely no self-attack. Like treat yourself as if you're your own precious, precious little baby. Because every drop of love you can pour into self-awareness will make that self-awareness expand exponentially. And first, before you leap, you want to see. And when you see and you feel, so much of the rest is already taken care of. How, the how, the when, the how much. And of course, we'll get into the how, the when, the how much. But if you got the seeing part down, if you can start seeing what's happening, and, and if you want to create a domino effect of awareness, then every time you see, don't go, oh, there I go again. <sighs> I totally didn't ask for my words. I fogged out. I knew the number. I didn't say it. Oh. I told this is the third day in a row I had check bank account on my list or get my password so I know how to check my bank account balance. Like, no, no punishment. Because this fog, these mixed messages and the situation we are in as women, this is universal. It's not you and the only way out is the way through. It's not you and the only way out is the way through because you can't opt out. The only way to play is all in and the first step is seeing the board. So it's like, Oh, I fogged. Woohoo! Oh, I avoided. I minimized. Oh, somebody offered me something I wanted and I just instinctively said no. What the fuck? Yay! I saw it. And it may seem counterintuitive, but this is how you educate yourself in a full bodied way. Because tips and tricks and 20 things to do and 20 things not to do and how to act and another hack is not what we fucking need. You can Google that shit on the internet, get a thousand things and more rules you won't remember because they're not based in you. It comes from you. So celebrating and finding it absolutely exquisite that you located another foggy spot, another avoidance is going to be critical to getting powerful with money. Identifying the conversations you're not having without feeling any pressure to have them. They will ripen of their own accord or you will develop the skills to have them. But just knowing that they're there and seeing them on the list and feeling great that you located them and not attacking yourself for not having them. Because we don't want to create a backward spiral. We have enough self-policing. We have enough self-attack. Oh, I'm too much this. I'm not enough that. I'm too much this. Oh, I better watch myself the way that sounded. Bossy. Oh, I'm needy, greedy, bossy. No, I'm needy and dependent. I'm ah. Uh, no more, no more, no more, not here, not in this game. Because if women are going to communicate powerfully in a full bodied way, it's going to involve so much self love, so much fun. And that's where powerful and playful come together. Where you can look someone in the eye, have a sense of humor and levity, even if it's a life or death situation, and know that if you just keep going for it and breaking through, you're gonna get exactly where you wanna go and you're gonna change the landscape of the game that you're in. <laughs> I just read, I just fogged again. So um, this is a good moment for some questions in the chat box. Does anybody have any specific questions they'd like to ask?
Or you know what, why don't we do frames first? Things that you want to remember from what you heard. And you can either put it in the chat box or you can raise your hand. What's, some, what's, a, what's, a, what's a moment of something that you read in the chat box or that you heard that you want to remember? And you can raise your virtual hand or your physical one. Jane Hart. Money is re money is relational. I really love that when you when you said that. I can't hear you. Oh. Hmm. Can you hear me now? No. I, I have no hear. audio from you. You're in a beautiful um, tropical background, looking <laughs> wonderful, but no I, voice. I, I unmuted so my- Let's try again a little bit. Who has a frame? Something that they heard that they want to remember. I'm, I'm trying to, I've tried to make this session as packed as possible for the women who aren't taking the course. They have enough meat to walk away with. Oh wait, hold on just one second. I am being told that there might be a problem with my audio. Let me just do a quick check. All right, let's try this again. Jane Hart, let's unmute you again. Can you hear me now? Yes, Jane. Yay. Jane. <laughs> Excellent. Technology will not okay. keep it. What's a frame of Remember. <laughs> Talking to you from a tropical virtual reality. Um, so money is relational. I loved it when you said that. Thank you. Well framed. Who else? Who else has a frame? Something you want to remember? Kate, Katie Tomer. Uh, so for me, I found it really important to celebrate when I have a moment of fog or um, rather than bash myself over the head, I would just be like, okay, so that's a conversation I need to have that I haven't had yet. So thank you. Beautiful, beautiful, well-framed, super well-framed. Stefania. I really appreciated you saying that it's really difficult to opt out of the system. I've been having these dreams with the pandemic of just like moving somewhere, living off the land. And thank you for that, that recognition that we're, no matter how far away I get, I'm still in the system. Beautiful, well-framed, well-framed. And just, just, to, just to add a little thing, going and starting a commune or getting some land and living off the land is a beautiful idea is an absolutely great thing to do. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's a great idea, especially if you're experimenting with new ways of living, but it's still not opting out. That was my only point. We're still in the game. We're still in the game. Another frame, Maya. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I don't have to be a sociopath to earn more money. I love that. <laughs> we need full body, fully there, present, all of us in this game. Otherwise, the game won't change. Well framed. Crystal Johnson. Hi. Okay, so the part about awareness, I, I like to think I have awareness about my shit, but the piece that was really key that you said was, what information am I avoiding getting? Well framed and well seen. Very, very self-aware you are. Thank you. Kimberly Clow. Oh, 
Uh, I, I was just that I was thumbs up in what she just said, because I, I was feeling that I was on the same riding the same wave. And um, I do want to say to um, Like, I feel extremely empowered by what you've shared today, like deeply. And I feel like, like a, a greater sense of um, my responsibility in not in not um, taking such a long time like i just keep walking around my thing and i feel like you're like like no 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 sweetie it's right <laughs> That's, so thank you thank you thank mm -hmm. you very well framed and for kimberly and crystal and anyone else who their particular frame speaks to dumb money questions is an exercise that we teach in the class that you can do without taking the class dumb money questions you just write a list and let yourself be dumb don't shamelessly be like i want to know how much money it costs to buy a house i want to know how much money i spend and you don't even need to get the answers just write the questions down lucy mckean thank you I, I think that maybe a piece of the, maybe it's my fog, but I kind of feel like I'm attaching to the, so the things that I was going to say is, is that empaths envy sociopaths and that uh, rich people can distance themselves from feeling about money. And I'm a little worried that I'm like connecting to the wrong messages of what you're trying to get, because I also really loved the only way to play is all in and the first step is seeing the board but i'm but i'm a little worried so maybe i'm in this fog but now right so it's like yeah 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 all i'm saying is part of the fog has to do with this internal conflict about whether to connect with or disconnect from feeling and the and the kind of instructions that are implicit in our culture uh, they're very much like money is a cold, sober, factual affair. And that's bullshit. It does bad things to people as they, as they accumulate wealth. And it does bad things to people who want to accumulate more money. Like that, nobody should have to make that choice. I amputate a part of myself in order to be good at something. So that's really the point. And this is, there's no, I'm, there's no like knocking rich people, poor people. Like we're all people here. We're humanity and we're grappling with something that I'm really excited that we're getting our hands on because it's slippery and corrupt and also full, full of promise. And it's like, it's, it's actually handling those things that we most don't want to handle that creates the greatest results in our world. Like head on facing sex, money, like whatever it is, it's the things that we're most likely to go, huh, I'm fine, you know? So feeling, not feeling. And, uh, you know, if, it, if any of you have had that feeling of being an empath and feeling like, oh, why is this such a curse and not a superpower? It has a lot to do with the cultural bent of the conversations that we have. And actually empathy is a superpower and sociopathy is a pathology. We got it backwards and upside down. And there's a way to live into an, emp an empathic world that increases your power, not increases your feeling of vulnerability and feeling like you need to isolate to take care of yourself. So it's, it's, it's absolutely essential um, to, to look at this. Um, I'm, I'm talking over your frames. Ah! Okay, <laughs> another frame. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Who has a frame? I see so many hands, but on big calls like this, I'm like, where do I go? Where do I go? What page? What page? Just clicking through pages. I want to make sure I get somebody from every page. Julia. Hi, Kasha. Hi. Uh, the last time I saw you was at Cornering Harvey. So ah! <laughs> those days. So I loved what you said about... Um, Having money does not equal having power with money. Mm -hmm. And that landed really deeply because there have been so many times I had money but was didn't know what to do with it and felt powerless with it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm taking that with me. And the, the fog and the freeze, remembering that that's a, a reaction I'm having. Beautiful. Thank you. Well framed. Rachel Strickland. Hey. Can you hear me? 
Yay! There you are, Rachel. Hey! Uh, so we've already kind of discussed it, but what you said about living in a time in which empaths envy sociopaths is now burned onto the inside of my skull. <laughs> I work with empaths and I'm like one of the people that helps them deal with them. Awesome. Awesome. Good work you're doing in the world. Thank you. Thank you we so much. Women, we need empaths and women to take over the world. <laughs> but that's who needs the power. That's wisdom. <laughs> Led with wisdom. Thank you so much. Thank you. Paola, what's your frame? Hi. Hi. So good to see you here again. Um, my frame is a see, feel before you jump or leap. So in other words, awareness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Well framed. We're, we're, we're playing with this, uh, this new breakdown of the curriculum where it's uh, seeing the invisible rules first, whether they're explicit or implicit, seeing the invisible rules. Then after seeing them, breaking them, and then third, creating new agreements, right? Like that's how the world changes. We see, we first, we bring the invisible to the visible. I mean, one of the most powerful things about Me Too, at least for me, was not necessarily like pointing out all the bad men, right? It was Tarana Burke's original intention to just create awareness of how many of us have suffered sexual harassment, violence, assault. And that Me Too hashtag was just about making the invisible visible. And we need to make the invisible visible because when we see and talk about the invisible making it visible. A lot of the rest of the work starts happening on its own. Then when we get really intentional about it, right? Then we can see the rules we wanna break in order to create something greater. That's when the vision comes in. That's when the, 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 the creation of a new world comes in. Even if you're only working on your small corner with your family and your friends and your, your professional life, because it's the individual seeing things differently that ends up making it possible for laws to change, for systems to change. We skip that part. And then what happens up there in the systemic just keeps bouncing around in these like idiotic ideological arguments that aren't related to the body, aren't related to the individual human experience. So every single woman can be an activist if she's taking charge of her own life. And every single woman who wants to be an activist doesn't have to sacrifice her own well-being and her own wealth and her own good life in order to go and bleed out for others. She can do it in an empowered way. It, that, that's the way the world changes. So anyway, thank you for that frame. <laughs> Let's do one more. Final frame. Ruben, do you see hands raised that I don't? Yes, Rivka. Oh, let me unmute. Hello, can you guys hear me? There you are. Hi. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Um, so I loved your explanation of empathy being a superpower because I was always taught that it was a deficiency in how in, in being good with money and business and all of that. Um, and that, you know, I, I, I read like tons of books about sociopaths and I never, I always felt like this isn't for me. Um, <laughs> so also for, I just have some questions about the course. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. So like I live in Tel Aviv, it's two in the morning right now. Oh, um, thank you for joining yeah. Do you plan. ever plan on offering it at like a time that's not in the middle of the night in Asian time zones? Yes, we, uh, for all our classes right now, we're looking at uh, moving the curriculum sort of all over the time zone map. Um, uh, for this semester, we kept the curriculum activities kind of spare because uh, my book was supposed to come out, but it got, thank goodness, postponed to Women's Day next year. <laughs> So we're looking at making some changes and adjustments, including more material and also including new time zones as our community goes more and more global. Thank you so much for, for being with us at this late hour. I really Thank appreciate you. it. No, I wanted to ask about this because I was really, really interested in the course, but it's, I would prefer if it were at a 
better time <laughs> so I wouldn't be in the middle of the night. But also, um, the, in terms of the format of the course, like I, is it going to be a smaller group so that there's more interaction or will it be a large format like this? It'll be smaller than this, yes. Okay. Yes, okay. and there'll be constant, constant interaction. You'll get sick of it. <laughs> I mean, if, okay. should you take it in your time zone? Like if anything, there's- <laughs> Thank you so much. If any students who've taken this class before, they know very much that this ends up being like a 24 seven thing. <laughs> okay. Does anyone have another question? Howa, do you have a question or a frame? Either, either is uh, welcome at this, at this time. Howa? Hello, everyone. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah, hi. Okay, it seems like um, I am struggling a bit with... Um, I'm trying to see... Can you see me? I don't know if you can see me. No, but I can hear you. Okay, so good evening, everyone. <laughs> this is... Uh, well, I stumbled upon um, this Zoom, I think 30 minutes to starting time, and I must oh, say, wow. welcome, welcome. it is one of the most fantastic webinars I've been on Thank in you. recent times. And uh, believe me, I have been on a dozen of women empowerment webinars, but this one takes the cake. <laughs> and, <laughs> seriously, I was just couldn't contain my excitement because... It's talking about um, a very sensitive thing that a lot of us um, are very um, not willing to talk about a very key weakness of many of us, which is money. Financial literacy is something that a lot of us struggle with because it's not taught in school, it's not taught to us at home, and we really do need it. Like, I am an entrepreneur, I'm a journalist, I have made tons of money in my life, which I have lost and I'm still making and I'm still losing. And I know that I need financial literacy, but I don't know where to start from. I'm thinking, should I go for an MBA? Should I study accountancy? I don't know. So when I saw this webinar on Facebook, I just clicked and joined. And I think I have noted down a few things that have been very helpful. And I would like to implore the host and organizers uh, to give us more webinars, please. We need more financial literacy. Because money is something we've been raised, like myself, I've been raised to like not want money, not desire yeah. money, because all oh, is unfeminine. Women are not supposed to look for money. Women are not supposed to want money. Yeah. I got divorced like five years ago. And as at the time I got divorced, I never asked my ex for money. Yeah. Because yeah. I didn't know how to. Yeah. And if yeah. he doesn't give, I don't care. I just go make my own money and solve my own problems. And yeah. I think that was one of the key things that broke the relationship down because he wasn't giving. He was expecting me to ask. And I was yeah. expecting him to give me without asking. Yeah. 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 So I think th there are a lot of um, barriers we need to have yes. the skills and the tools to crush for yeah. us to be able to properly grow into our true, authentic, powerful selves as women. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think you guys have just got that figured out and I'm so on willing to learn. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Um, one thing I'll say to you, right? So I, I can't stand sales pitchy free webinars, right? I want to say that there is this course coming up on Thursday that handles all of the things that you're talking about. However, if you are not taking that course and I want to honor every single woman who's here, who doesn't feel like she's only here to be potential consumer. <sighs> right? If you're not taking the course, a place for you to look is actually the Academy's website. The easiest way to get there is weteachpower.com. For you, I would especially look at the blogs on asking, on independent women, and anything that's there about money. We have so many resources there because we don't want accessibility to be limited. Now, I'm also seeing that in the chat, there are a lot of people who are asking specific questions about the course. And again, because I hesitate so much about being sales pitchy, um, I can't stand taking something that's free and then feeling like, oh yeah, I didn't get anything out of it except that I should take this course. 
But also, so you have some information. The way the course works, right? Just straight information, no sales pitch. The way the course works is that we meet online for classes once a week. And the second time is, uh, for, we meet twice. The second time is get unstuck hall. So in the first class, you'll get concepts, exercises, we'll share, we'll do partnered exercises, we'll explore, we'll dig deep. And then on the second session of the week, we have get unstuck call where you can ask questions. Am I doing the exercise right? I did this homework. This is what came up with. Um, and there's, it's like a study hall where you can do also some of the homework for your person who doesn't like have time to do homework. And it's helpful to be in a Zoom room with others who are doing homework. We do it together. And there's, and there's a chance for Q&A. On top of that, we have a, a, a thread that like right now we're thinking about moving from WhatsApp to Telegram, but it's nonstop. And this is what I mean by 24 seven questions, posted assignments, feedback, people, people like breaking, breaking down, breaking through going like, ah, I just asked and it changed my life. And somebody else being like, I feel like I suck at this class. And then we're like, yay, bad students, all students welcome. <laughs> So it's a six week intensive ride digging into all of the territory that we have here uh, talked about, plus more, obviously, like this has just been an hour and eight minutes. Um, I hope for all of you who, this is the one time I'll see you, that you go to the website, you've taken notes, you take something away from this and you use it in your life. And for the rest of you, I'll see you on Thursday. Uh, a world where women are fully in their power when it comes to money, when it comes to their voice, in their bodies is the thing I see critical for this world getting on the right course. I, don't, I personally don't see another way. This is the way, this is the way. That's why I want to support every woman who can take classes and every woman who can't in every single way possible. So thank you for being here because in being here and even showing up, you're doing the first brave thing, which is to be like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a woman who wants more power and money and more power with money. And that's already a brave soul. That's already going against the grain. And thank you for sharing so, so, so openly the things you said on the threads so transparent, vulnerable, nailing it, just getting down to the heart of it. And third, just a final blessing. May you go out there and break those stupid mixed message money spells and go and ask and collaborate and just like change this world, please. <laughs> All right. That's a wrap for today. Thank you for being with us and hope to see you again in one capacity or another. Mm.